go. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on radical acceptance. Hopefully this hour makes everyone's life a little easier today. So I'm Elena. We'll do some introductions first. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Elena Cara. I've been at the practice since last August, but I've been doing DBT much longer than that. Um, Stephanie and I are DBT partners in crime. We got trained together back in what 2014, I think, at this point. So it's yeah. been some years. It's been some years that Stephanie and I have been teaching DBT together. Um, so lots of experience with DBT, and I love this skill. I feel like it is so important, and it's a starting point. Like without radical acceptance, where are we? You know, where are we starting? So that's a big reason why I wanted to teach this webinar today. I have a real passion for this skill. Um, and hopefully you guys gain a lot out of it. So Steph, handing it over to you, talk a little bit about yourself. Okay, so um, like Elena had mentioned, um, her and I have been doing DBT for quite some time and we did start out together. I have been at DBT of South Jersey now since actually we opened in 2018. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I literally was like the first therapist that had a session here so that's pretty like cool that's like my claim to fame so I additionally lo love the radical acceptance skill because I feel like life is really really hard sometimes and we all experience super painful situations that we're not ready for and there's no way of stopping them so this skill I know personally and professionally has helped me so much so so much so i'm excited for you guys to get to learn a little more about it today yes we are not uh, we don't sell a product that we don't believe in stephanie and i can both attest to how this skill has changed our lives for the better so i hope to pass that knowledge on to you all we will do some radical genuineness and use ourselves as examples throughout the way um so we're going to get started but before we do we would like to promote our next webinar it's going to be on the 9th. So our webinars are always the second Thursday of the month. So our next one will be on 6-9 from 5 to 6. Um, that will be with Shailene and Alex on the skill of opposite action. Another good one. <laughs> and I can say that about probably most skills, all skills, but that's another um, game changer, I would say. Um, so, additionally, Elena, yeah. I just want to add. Additionally, yeah. radical acceptance is going to also have a level of opposite action within it so it's almost like you guys are having a preview about what shailene and alice are going to be teaching next mm -hmm. webinar so one of the components within radical acceptance really speaks to opposite action mm -hmm. yeah you're going to see that when we get to my component a little later in the webinar where we talk about um <clears throat> strategies like how to accept you know like we could talk about it all day but we really don't know how to accept then that's like super challenging so um you will see that so i'm glad that stephanie mentioned that so this mm -hmm. will kind of piggyback into that session so if you guys are like what is opposite action you want to know more then we're going to be teaching you next time so just like stay tuned so that should be a great time um and as always if you are missing today's webinar or someone that you know, someone in the family, a friend that you recommended for this webinar did sign up but is unable to make it right now, they are able to replay it. Um, and we also have this on our YouTube channel too, which I actually just found that out today. I was like, oh, we have it up on YouTube also. So if you like really love it that much, we like really altered yeah. your life today and you want to see <laughs> us again, then go on our YouTube channel and check out. We have all the webinars on that too. So um, so that's, that's our little, um, promotion there. But Stephanie and I wanted to start you guys out with a role play on radical acceptance. We felt that would be a good way to demonstrate this skill in live action. Um, so the thing with radical acceptance is that um, you can use it in your day. Um, like day to day things we call it like smaller things to accept and then there are like bigger things to accept. So this might be like a smaller thing to accept. But Anybody put in the chat if you guys are sports fans, let us know what team you rep. Um, let us know what sports you love. I'm going to put mine in the chat. Stephanie has, is, is showing hers up, down, left, and right. <laughs> always, always repping the birds. I know one thing in the moment I'm trying to radically. She's a Steelers fan. 
<laughs> oh, we got a Steelers fan. That's okay. Yeah. Steelers are okay. Deborah's an Eagles, Eagles fan. Maple Leafs. Anita, nicely done. Your team could take this series, and I would love it. So, <laughs> rep in <laughs> um, Remember, the Eagles yes. and the Steelers were once combined as yes. the Steagles back in the day. So, we'll yes. rep that all day. Yes, we will definitely represent that. Thanks, guys, for letting us know mm-hmm. what you love, what you rep for your sport. So we're gonna we're gonna rep some um, sports right now because today was a big day in Stephanie's world, my world too. If you guys see behind my head is Nick Foles right there. Book behind my head is Nick Foles with the Lombardi Trophy. So big day for both of us, but really for Steph. Um, today the Eagles season schedule was released. She's got her stapler. She was ready for it. Like schedule coming out today but it it's just not looking how Steph wanted it to go she's a season ticket holder so we're gonna have a conversation a little role play on radical acceptance with this schedule because it's just it's not what Steph wants so here we go um Steph today was a big day today was schedule day huge what what, what you, huge day so like what are your thoughts what are we looking at for the year I'm not okay with this I'm not happy oh no not happy. The schedule is not what I had hoped for it to be. Mm. And I already put half my money down for my season tickets. So I still got the other oh. half. So I'm having a lot of mixed feelings, especially because opening day this year, I don't know if you saw, but I saw, and I, you know, I'm about to um, cross it off in my planner because it is a Monday night opening day opening home opener that's Monday not night. fair that's just not fair usually Sunday is the day for football Sunday is the day the afternoon <gasps> where the home openers on a Monday night what is that about Monday night I'm, I'm oh. so irritated I I don't even know Elena I just can't oh. I I literally I don't want to accept this at all oh. at oh. all like I don't blame you it's it's gonna mess up your schedule and everything I don't know like can is there a way to solve the problem? Like, can you solve it somehow? I know you're upset by this. Can we solve this? Some of it. You want, <laughs> do you think I have the power to change the schedule? Do you? I don't know. I, I guess you're right now. Those people yeah, are much Jeff bigger. Murray, we're like this. I know. I know he's my boy. Love you. Sometimes. Dialectically. I love you and I hate you. I can't knock on his door. I can't. I can't just show up at the link and be like, can you take our home opener and put it on Sunday, put it on a Sunday so that we can, and me, like I can really embrace Sunday football in the beginning of the year. Yeah. No, I, I feel that. No, I think you're right. Like, I think a lot of people feel the way you do, but we just like, it's like a bigger problem. So can you change how you feel about it? Is there like a way to be like, all right, cool. Like it's a Monday night. Like, can we change how we feel about it in any way? Mm. No. Well, if, if I changing the way I feel about it, I, I can't solve it. No way. Can't do that. Changing the way I feel about it. I am so irritated because this year we're supposed to be like pretty top notch. I know every year we're, we're top notch. We are yeah. Super Bowl contenders every year. Yeah. And this year I thought it would be a little more exciting. You know, we got some new players with the draft. Yeah. And now we have to wait till Monday Night Football? Yeah, no, no true. I'm it's true. I'm, I'm angry. I don't want to change your feelings about it because I totally get the anger and like you put a lot of money down. So like changing how you feel. So I think like the only two options left are like accept it or tolerate it or just stay miserable. Well, I, can you find a way to accept it? How? Is there how? a way? No, you're like right. diehard birds fan. How the heck am I going to, going to accept this? I mean, it's like we can do a pros and cons of it accepting it there's can we look at dialectically dialectic make it, make it better maybe invite me <laughs> right yeah. I mean that that could be some type of problem solving however pros and yeah. cons would be do I take Miss Elena or my sister Heather so that would bring up a whole nother problem so then I'm I'm still going to be miserable because yeah. then I'm going to feel bad if I take you and not her or her and then not you I just I can't I, I really feel like I'm just going to embrace this misery right now mm. because there's no way. 
I would hate for you to stay miserable though, because you just love the birds so much and such a big part of your life and you and you got the stapler and the pen and everything, like all the office supplies. So I would hate for you to stay miserable. Like it's always an option to stay miserable, but you don't have to stay miserable. Maybe, maybe we can work towards accepting together. Maybe I can help you with that. I mean, if you have this secret magical skill power of, I don't know, I think I might've heard about it once, like radical acceptance. If you could maybe teach me that, I'm, I'm willing. I'm do willing that. to give it a try. I'm willing to turn that. my mind around and give it a try. We can now, do I'm, that. I'm not like, I'm still like kicking, screaming, like as if I would have to sit next to a Cowboys fan. Like I'm still <laughs> kicking and screaming. So I, I have faith in you, Elena. I know we've, we've been friends and coworkers for a really long time. So I'm, I'm going to take you up on this opportunity. Yes. We got Give it. We're going to do this. And we're going to do it for everybody else in our audience land, right? We're going to now put you on our backs. We're going to carry you through um, the process of reality acceptance. So just to put some context, what we're talking about, when it comes to radical acceptance, not just radical acceptance, but any problem, there are four ways to solve any problem. Mm -hmm. Radical acceptance is one of them. So we get a lot of, we get a lot of questions around the timeliness of this skill. Like, when do we use this skill? When's the best time? How do I know whether I should push for change or whether I am at the place of acceptance yet? Like, and that's a really valid question. So we have to go through the steps first. So if you notice the first thing I said to Steph was, can you solve the problem, right? So if we're not really sure what to do, if we're accepting versus changing, if we're in radical acceptance mode yet, see if you can solve the problem. And she's like, I, I'm not that powerful. I'm not the great and powerful eyes. I don't create this nope. schedule. I would love to change it, um, but I just can't, right? So if we can solve the problem, try and solve the problem and see if you still, you know, feel like, you know, there, there's more to that. But um, if you can't solve the problem, then see if you can change how you feel about it. See if you can change your feelings. See if you can act opposite or use some dialectical strategies to see both sides. So you kind of honor both sides and perhaps that will change your feelings on it. But if you can't do one, either of the two, then we are looking to radically accept. That is our next step. Staying miserable was also something that Stephanie and I both mm -hmm. mentioned. You can, staying miserable, right? So that might look like sitting and pouting and you know, um, stomping our feet and like being willful, meaning fighting back against it. Like that's always an option. It's always there for you. You can go back to that whenever you want, I tell people, but it's really not a great way to, um, approach things. Um, it's much more freeing when you're able to accept it in the long run. Um, so that's really the process for how we get to radically accepting and stay miserable. Again, it's an option, but it's not the best option. So try one, two, and three first, and we're going to really teach you three, how we radically accept. But before we get into this, we would like to ask you guys some answer, ask you guys some, some questions. If you could kindly answer us in the chat, we would love to know your thoughts. Um, this isn't just acceptance, this is radical acceptance. I, I feel like that word always like throws a, like a little wrench in there for people. Like, wow, like that, that I mean, that's like really distinct, you know? Um, like a Monday so, night home opener. Yeah, like a Monday <laughs> night home, like that's like really distinct. It like really throws mm -hmm. a wrench in the fire, you know? So tell us in the chat, we'll give you guys some, some moments to answer. We'll read your responses out loud. What's your concept of radical acceptance? There's no right or wrong here. What is your understanding? What is your concept of radical acceptance? And if you feel like you don't know, say like, well, yeah, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's why, why I'm I, here. That's why I, drew, I joined tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Coming into a situation with open hands. Mm. I think of, yes, I think of yoga, just like, open palm, open mind, not crossed arms, like closed, open hands, open mind. Oh yes, how to make something tolerable. Oh, it yeah. is still a distress tolerance skill. Accepting something even if it's the last thing you wanna accept and being non-judgmental. Yes. Great answer, you guys are all on point. Mm -hmm. Tolerating it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On that note, as you guys are continuing to type, um, there are two types of, dist of distress tolerance skills, crisis survival and reality acceptance. 
So yeah, there's still a tolerance piece to this when we just can't do anything about reality any longer. We have to find a way to tolerate reality and we need skills for that. So DBT is really smart like that. So mm-hmm. nice responses from you guys. Does anybody want to share? Um, it doesn't have to be super big. You know, again, we use an example of our Eagle season here. Um, something that you had to radically accept recently. We'll share some of our own too. Well, people are thinking a little. I'll share some answers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, graduating high school. Yes. Woo! <laughs> Um, I'm radically accepting that I can't see everyone right now and I really want to. So that was, was a hard that's one. Smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Graduating high school, that's mm-hmm. oh yeah, that's um that's a tough one to accept. Some people I feel are like, yes, I'm done. Some people have a really hard time with it, and it's totally understandable. It's a big change. Mm-hmm. I know for moms too, like, oh, graduating. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, for me, a small one. Newfoundland's weather. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, hold on. Accepting Newfoundland's weather. <laughs> yeah. um, that's a tough one. My phenomenal medical director resigning. Wow, that's a tough one. Yeah. The loss of like a phenomenal coworker and a relationship and... You're like, darn, who's gonna replace that person? <laughs> Is that even possible? I, I, this is a, a small, ordinary in your day thing to accept, but I frequently find myself needing to use these skills for traffic and long, and long lines in stores. Mm-hmm. I will be willful until I'm at my destination or until the line is done, you know, talking to myself and rolling my eyes, right? It's a small example, but like, I have to constantly remind myself reality acceptance right now. <laughs> so that's a very small example, but I, I tend to turn to those skills in those moments. Um, a radical acceptance for me was joining this practice last year. Now it was obviously a very dialectical change where I was very excited to take another step in my career and a very sad loss at the same time, loss of like relationships and friendships from my prior workplace. So it was a lot of radical acceptance to know, like you still have those relationships, but differently, yeah. you know? So that was like a big, big um, time in my life. I think I'm still using radical acceptance with it, you know? Um, so, but that was definitely a really challenging one for me. So, um, Without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Stephanie and she's going to start teaching about radical Mm -hmm. acceptance and I'm going to kind of end with the steps for. Okay, so listen up. Mm -hmm. Take it over. So we're going (laughs) to, what was that? Take it over, Steph. (laughs) Taking it over. I'm radically accepting also that I did not have time to put my lashes on. So I'm lashless for you guys today. (laughs) Um, I'm going to really have you guys see that there are many different aspects of radical acceptance and how different radical acceptance is from acceptance in general. Just the word acceptance and the definition of acceptance. I know it's something that a lot of um, like teens and adults and like little guys that I work with that really struggle with like, well, what do you mean radical acceptance? It's accepting and I'm not accepting, like I'm not accepting this situation, right? It's not about approval of a certain situation. It's really breaking it down and understanding what it is, what actually has to be accepted with what you're experiencing and like why it's important to do it, okay? If we don't know what it is, why it's important, like, how are we actually going to be able to radically accept something fully? Okay, so really, really breaking it down. We're also going to talk about factors that get in the way, things that make you not want to radically accept. As Elena and I did the um, the little dyad for you, I, I fully did not want to accept the Eagles having the home opener on Monday night. And there was a lot of things that were getting in the way of me wanting to accept that. 
Okay, so stay tuned. As I mentioned previously, we all are going to experience painful situations in life. There's absolutely no way of avoiding it, right? Whether it's the loss of your medical director, right? Whether it's the loss of your favorite ring, or, you know, um, a receipt and you wanted to return something to Ross. We all experience painful situations. What intensity it is and how long is this actually staying with us? Radical acceptance is really accepting something completely with your mind, your body, your spirit, your whole being. Okay, it's not like I'm gonna radically accept it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but when Tuesday, Thursday and the weekend roll around, I'm like, nope, no way, crossed arms, it's not happening. It's something that you're fully, fully accepting. Okay, you're not approving, saying it's okay, but you're accepting it because if you don't, you're staying more miserable than anything else. You're causing more suffering to yourself. Okay. I can give you all a personal example. Um, Elena knows and a lot of my colleagues that I've been struggling with some medical stuff going on and not having specific answers, which is something that I've been pretty willful about radically accepting. And without my team, it's even harder to practice radical acceptance because they're here to encourage me to use it when I don't have an answer. Right? I can't solve a problem with something medically going on. And I need to do it all the way because it's causing me more stress. It's making me feel worse. More emotions are coming up. Okay. Yeah, I definitely want to emphasize what Steph is saying that like radical means all the way, like our thoughts, our mm -hmm. inner being, it's like, a, it's like a spiritual feeling too, you know, like we feel it on like a deep level. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have ever had like a spiritual awakening of how you've accepted and what that felt like, put it in the chat for us. I'm going to put some of my mm -hmm. thoughts in there as Steph is teaching, but. I know practicing radical acceptance with particular people in your life can be really helpful as well. Because we're, we can control our emotions, right? And we can't control other people and how they respond to us or engage with us. And sometimes we need to radically accept that that person is going to respond in certain ways and we can't do anything about it. So the more we stomp our feet and like bite our cheek, it's only causing us more pain. Like if my mom's watching, sorry, mom. And I had to do this with my mom throughout my life because if not, it would have impacted our relationship a great deal. And it did actually when I was a teen. Do we have something in the chat? Did Elena, did you put? I put that in the chat. Mm, what it feels, feels like when you're radically accepting, freeing physically and mentally, like that burden, like weight is finally lifted because it's like through and through you, right? The true mm. meaning of radical. Yeah, like has anyone gone to get an x-ray and or, you know, an x-ray and they put that big heavy metal, like, um, I think it's metal, right? Little like rope so. thingy on you. Any like, medical professionals correct us if you're in the audience that you know. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, they're saying that thing in the comments in the chat. Hmm. Okay. Oh, hmm. I put like hosts and panelists. Okay. That's odd. Thanks, Jean. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know. Because, yeah, I put a comment in the chat. It said, for me, it's freeing mentally and physically. And it says, me to hosts and panelists. So it's supposed to be to Stephanie and everybody out there. But I don't know. So if you guys were seeing it on our end, so we can, if you want to put comments in the chat as you go along, we'll call it out for you. Make sure it's that it's being read. So thanks for the solid okay. observe. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Okay. So breaking it down, what is radical acceptance? Full mind, body, spirit, letting go of bitterness. All right. And what, the, what the heck do we have to radically accept? Like what falls into a category of radical acceptance versus acceptance or something else, right? So we're focusing on accepting reality for what it is currently, okay? 
not maybe what's happened like in the past, right? How it's impacting us currently in this situation. How is it making our life more miserable by us choosing to suffer and not fully accept it? Just this moment, just this present moment, okay? Even if you don't like it, even if you do not like it at all whatsoever, right? I do not like Monday night football. Like I like Monday night football and I don't like Eagles home opener Monday night. Right? And I'm sure my Monday night clients aren't gonna like that either because now I have to rearrange things, right? Okay. We also have to look at when something puts some type of like limitation on us and our ability and how it could impact our future. That's a big deal. If we're not radically accepting something in the moment and we know it could impact our future in a negative way, that's something that is painful and worth radically accepting. The radical, worth radically accepting. Okay. Also identifying like everything has a cause and effect, right? There is always something that causes something else. Painful situations come on, there's a cause for them. We can't control the painful situation when it comes at us. And it is going to impact us in a certain type of way. Whether it's in that exact moment or how I mentioned in the future. Yeah, I wanna reiterate that one too, because for a lot mm -hmm. of people, when we talk about causes of reality, what led to what, what, what really led to this, you know, um, it just puts things in better perspective. I'll give you guys an example. So years ago, my very best friend lost her dad to cancer. It was just so sad. And they tried many different interventions for him and medical treatments. And it was just a very non-responsive type of cancer. So unfortunately he passed away and mm. she's really big on acceptance. Um, and we were talking about it. I never, I will never forget this conversation. We were walking on the beach and I was just like, how are you feeling? And she said, I have to keep reminding myself like I, I go into this like shame and blame mode and like, I could have done more. She's a medical professional too. She's like, I could have done more. I could have done more. Like, you know, it is our fault. You know, we could have done more to help them. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? And she's like, no, I need to stop. Like, I just need to say to myself, he had a very aggressive form of cancer. It was untreatable. We did everything we could to help him. And this was, this was it. This was the final outcome. So that was her way of identifying causes. And in a very non-judgmental way, right? There was no judgment in that. This led to this, led to this, led to this, right? And then also something that we're going to mention a little bit later is that acceptance tends not to stick. You have to keep coming mm -hmm. back to it. So she had to keep coming back to the cause over and over again. So that's what she did. And that's how what Stephanie's talking about can work in a live situation. What caused this, right? Cause and effect can help people. I've seen it. You know, I've seen the thought process change. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I know Elena and I are talking about this skill very freely and it is a very very hard skill to learn and practice and feel like you completely radically accept something it's not something that you can grab onto like a koosh ball or a self-soothing object. It's not a tangible thing right there in front of you. It's something that you really, really have to train yourself and keep turning your mind to, if I don't accept this fully, it's really causing me so much more pain. And it's making me feel so much worse. And I wanna have a life that's worth living, even when these painful things come up. Because painful things are not going to stop. I wish we had a magic wand to take away all the painful things in this world, and we don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're good therapists, we're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Just... <laughs> right? Take a bell as our um Elena, our old manager would say, uh, Steph, bring out that uh, DBT fairy dust. Like, can we get some of that? <laughs> Sprinkle it around. Um, we joke because it, this is hard. Um, and sometimes joking makes it feel a little less um, intense. 
However, I do want to bring it back. This is a very hard skill. Right? And you guys are here learning about it because you want to make certain changes. And maybe there have been things where you feel like, why am I accepting reality? Why am I doing it? I don't want to do it. Why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? And hopefully this can help. So breaking it down a little further. Why the heck are we even going to accept reality for what it is? See how Elena kept pushing and pushing and pushing with me in our little dyad, our little skit? And I was not budging. I was like, no, no, no. But guess what? As I'm saying, no, no, no. Am I changing the reality of the schedule? Am I changing anything? No. Right? Am I like praying and hoping that like the NFL Network just like sees this webinar and changes it for me? Right? I can't change the situation. I really can't change it. But I have to accept it that this is what came out today. This is the information that I was given. These are the facts. Right? This is what was handed to me today. Well, actually, we found out about Monday night a few days ago, but the full schedule comes out today. <laughs> a little later tonight yes. <laughs> but pain can't be avoided right experiencing something and reacting to a situation that you're not happy with it can't be avoided right? i can't just say la 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 and pretend like it's not there or the way the way that i'm feeling isn't real mm -hmm. i can't pretend and people do that all the time too. You guys may know, think of someone or maybe you've done it yourself at some point, but if we shut our eyes and pretend it's not there, it doesn't make, this, it doesn't make the pain go away. So we need skills for, to deal with what life, life is giving us at this moment. Mm -hmm. Because if not, then our pain, we're turning into suffering. We're choosing at this point to suffer through. We're experiencing the pain and we're choosing to suffer through it. So example, I don't know if anyone else is a fan of long hots in here. I love long hots, especially in the summer, stuffed long hots, right? When I eat them, my stomach hurts so bad while I'm eating them. My mouth is burning. It's on fire. I can feel all the seeds in my mouth. It's so painful, right? So painful. These peppers are scorching my mouth. And I'm choosing to suffer because I'm eating the whole thing. I'm eating that whole long hot from start to finish. And this might be, again, something smaller to look at a painful situation and radically accepting, but I am pumping through and I'm like, well, nope, you know what? I'm gonna refuse and refuse and refuse to think any other way than I'm gonna eat this whole pepper and I'm gonna suffer. Means. <laughs> I'm going to suffer. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to suffer. Me with wasabi. I don't know if you guys can relate, but the wasabi face and you're like, I need more of it. The sushi is just not complete without the wasabi. Mm -hmm. Right. We put ourselves in pain, but pain we can deal with. We can deal. We can totally deal with pain. Mm -hmm. But again, if I'm eating this pepper and I'm suffering through and I'm still like, oh my God, Elena, my mouth is on fire. She's like, well, Steph, maybe stop like eating the pepper. I'm like, no, pff, you're right. And I'm like, oh my God. Elena, why did you let me eat that? I can't even believe I ate that. And now I continue to suffer. And now this bitterness and anger and resentment, all, all these painful emotions are now coming up for me. And I'm still choosing not to stop eating the pepper. Still like button down, going. I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe if I add this crustini, it'll be okay. No, it's problem solving is not working here, right? Still experiencing this pain. Okay. Accepting something can also make you feel more sad at times. Almost like I didn't win. Or if I accept this, the other person wins. Right? If I accept a situation that I don't like, a painful situation, you know, well, the other person's got the power. Perfect example for my relationship with my mom when I was younger. I'm actually going to read number seven from the book, straight from the book, because it connects me and like Marsha Linehan are like 
mother of DBT, right? Number seven, the path out of hell is through misery. By refusing to accept the misery, that's the part of climbing out of hell. You fall back into hell. If you're not accepting the situation that you're in, you're going to keep staying in that situation. It's going to keep repeating itself and keep repeating itself and keep repeating itself. If you start, and then as soon as you start, then you're like, F this, I'm not gonna do it, it's bringing you back down. So by accepting misery, you're saying, I'm accepting it, it's like this, it is the way it is, and I can get through this. I know that if I accept the misery, then I can move past the misery because it's just that moment, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. And I really wanted to read that because Marsha, I love when she, um, when I like review one of her posts on YouTube where it says, life is painful and it's worth living. The basis of life worth living goal is people come to DBT or therapy and they feel like they're in hell. And part of learning skills is to help you get out of hell and stay out of hell, which I feel like radical acceptance has a big part. Yeah. Okay. I know we're throwing some words at you guys, like hell and misery and all that stuff, but <laughs> think of it this way, right? The only way out is through, right? If we have, if we have not dealt with pain, it has progressed to suffering. We're now in hell. If we we're you know, in the stay miserable mode with pain, Right. But if we don't deal with that pain, then we're totally in hell and we're suffering. The only mm -hmm. way out is through. We got to climb that ladder. Right. We got to walk through it, you know, walk through that fire and the flame to get there. But the other side is better. And what Steph was saying about sadness is so true. A lot of people just don't want to accept because it's really hard. You feel sad at first. Sometimes that's mm -hmm. why you're not doing because you just don't want to face that sadness. But the other side, there's a rainbow telling you there's a rainbow on the other side. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get into, um, so we can leave some time for questions at the end. Also, um, hopefully this chat will be working. <laughs> um, I'm a little concerned, but if you guys want to try to put some comments in there as you know, I'm going along this, but, um, how the heck do you do this? Like Steph said, this is not like a reach out and grab it type skill. It's something you, that you have to really work on over time and continue to bring turn your mind back to because it's not so tangible. But it's, it, there's a feeling to it. I know when I'm accepting something and I know when I'm not. I know when I'm furthering and moving myself closer to suffering and when I'm just in pain and I'm okay and I can deal with that. You know, It's a very physical feeling for me personally. For you, it might be different. But how the heck do you get there? Like, what do we do? So this will make it hopefully a little more tangible. So I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully my computer lets me do that. Just so you guys can see it for yourselves, the steps for radically accepting. So um, we have to notice it. <laughs> Our first step is that we don't know what we don't know. So you have to know that you're fighting reality. What does that look like for you? What do you say? How do you stand? What do you do? How do you feel? Do you stand with your hand on your hip? Do you isolate yourself? Do you cry? Do you hide your face, right? Do you change the, your, the tone of your voice? Like, what do you do? You have to notice that you're fighting it. That's like step number one. So you might be saying something like, no, 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 it shouldn't be this way. Um, why is it this way, right? Those are some things to look for. So observe that you're fighting reality, step one. Step two, we have to remind ourselves that reality is as it is and it cannot be changed, right? So many times we just call this skill the it is what it is skill, right? It's just as simple as that to remember it sometimes if we're struggling to really find meaning in this skill. It is what it is. We have to remind ourselves this is reality. This is how it went down and we just can't change that right now. We can't change this aspect of this circumstance. This is what happened, right? Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, remind yourself that there are causes for reality. Well, what are cause? Like, what do you mean this? How is this cause? What What is a cause, right? Well, like Steph said, there's a cause and effect to everything. So some type of history led up to this, right? Maybe that person's history led them to treat you a certain way, right? Whether it's emotional, um, whether it's medical, right? 
whether it's this fact led to this fact led to this event, right? Something led to today when people kind of blindly shrug their shoulders and say, I don't know how, how we got here. That's hard. That's hard. That's a hard reality to accept because the steps in between are missing. And we just know that we have something very difficult on the other side, but everything along the way is a question mark, right? So when we can put the pieces of the puzzle together much better that way, right? We can consider how other people's lives have been shaped by a series of factors, right? And how these factors have led up to history in this moment. And this is just how reality had to be. So I'll give you guys a more extreme example. Um, I taught this skill um, to a group of women that I was really concerned to um, teach it to. Um, a lot of them had been through really traumatic things, trauma in their lives of different kinds. And I was actually really very um, pleasantly surprised how they were handling it because this, this in itself was really helpful. One girl in particular, younger girl, a young adult, who was a, um, experienced abuse from a stepbrother of hers said, you know, this is not me letting him off the hook, but I know he was abused. And he was abused because his parents were abused and they never learned right from wrong. So if you never learned right from wrong, then you never really know how to treat people. You know, if you're never taught that, then that's just not fair, right? If you never really learn how to crawl, how can you learn how to walk? And it was just a really nice way of representing this. And again, it's a, it's a bigger example, but it shows how powerful it can be. Because if we just put things into context, it really can make more sense. And you can really kind of sit with that a lot easier. This is how it happened. This is how it went down, right? Some things that may help you once you get past this step, because now we're at the point where like, oh, darn, we got to accept this, right? You can practice accepting with your whole self. Like we said, this is radical acceptance, deep in, through and through, right? So in your mind, right? How are you changing your thoughts? How do your thoughts change when you're radically accepting? In your body, do you feel <laughs> calmer? Is your heart racing less? Do you feel less tense? Do you feel like you can breathe? I know I can just breathe easier when I'm radically accepting. I don't feel a heaviness. In your spirit, do you have a lighthearted step? You know, a little spring to your step? Do you feel lighter emotionally? Like this, like this weight has been lifted, right? And be creative, right? Like, is there a self-talk strategy that you can say, right? For me, I say the serenity prayer. For those of you guys may be familiar with that, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and was into the difference. That's my accepting self-talk. I actually have it on a butterfly in my room, a little butterfly um, figure. But you can use relaxation, progressive muscle relaxation, meditation. YouTube has some great um, radical acceptance mindfulness. Tara Brock, she's my lady, cheerleading her. She wrote about radical acceptance, books on radical acceptance, meditations on it. She's on YouTube. She's on her, she's got a website, Tara Brock. B-R-A-C-H. She's like the radical acceptance queen. I listen to her. She's very relaxing and she's very wise. Um, mindfulness of your breathing, right? Just observing your breath in and out. Half smile, willing hands. Willing hands. Somebody said at the beginning, we approach it with open hands, right? Literally open your hands, right? While you think about what feels unacceptable, right? So do these things as you're contemplating and stewing on this unacceptable thing. I will stand in that long stinking grocery line with willing hands. If I have one hand on a cart or like a shopping bag, then the other hand is willing. <laughs> That's where I'm at these days, right? Use imagery, go to an accepting place, go to somewhere safe, go somewhere safe for you mentally, right? And this is where we practice opposite action like Steph referred to at the beginning of our seminar, we're gonna have opposite action next. Opposite action literally means opposite action. Right, so if you're um, fighting this reality and being willful, I'm not going, I'm not doing, I'm not thinking, I'm not saying. Opposite action means do the opposite of your urge. If you're not accepting, accept. If you won't go, go. If you won't think about it, think. If you won't feel those feelings, feel, right? Or just think about what it would be like for you to do that. Act opposite to that emotion and see if on the other side, you can be more accepting, right? Kind of like fake it till you make it. Act as if you did accept it. See what happens. See what's on the other side. Because sometimes we fight it so hard that we don't think, we convince ourselves that this is the only way. This is the only way to go is to keep fighting. But when you let go of that fight and you see what could be, 
you actually might surprise yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, cope ahead. Cope ahead means we plan in advance for things that seem unacceptable to us. Situations, people, right? So if you're in a situation where you know it's going to be hard for you to keep accepting someone or something might jar you from that acceptance, right? Like plan in advance for how you're going to stay in a place of acceptance or when you think about that thing that's unacceptable, exactly what you're going to do. How am I going to cope ahead the next time I feel unacceptable, like this is an unacceptable thing, right? I will, if I know I am going to a store at a busy time, I know that in my head, like Elena, you know, you're going to get in a long line. So Mm -hmm. you need to cope ahead (laughs) and know that you're going to hold your shopping bag in your right hand and willing hand in your left because you're going to have a hard time accepting, (laughs) right? What would you do? And rehearse this, practice it over and over again, right? So think about something really hard. You think someone said graduation, right? Think about walking up to the graduation line, radically accepting, right? I don't know. I might just like hold out a willing hand as I get my diploma, right? I might do a little half smile as I'm on stage, right? Mom sitting in the audience is going to sit there, half smile, willing hands like this, radically accepting, right? So cope ahead for something that you know is going to really challenge you here. and practice what you're going to say, how you'll stand, how you'll turn your mind back towards acceptance, right? Um, Body sensations. Our bodies hold our emotions really well. Like they're really, really good at it. Um, As you, this is a great one because when you start to not accept again, you tense, you tight, you squish Mm -hmm. your face, you know, all that changes. So attend your body doesn't notice that, right? Relax your facial expression relax your shoulders, relax your stomach. I used to have all my tension in my stomach. I was so anxious that I think I just would hold my breath and breathe and hold everything in my, in my belly like this, like just like a tight little ball, like a knot for years. I never noticed that. Breathe, right? Breathe into what's unacceptable and allow yourself to be sad. Allow it. We fight it. That's why we don't accept. Sitting with feelings and just experiencing that emotional growth is huge. It's a big part of therapy. So to definitely not resort to negative behavior, self-destructive behavior instead, and know that even with sadness, like our life is still worth living. It doesn't erase it. We can have pain and still have reasons to live. But ultimately, if you have a really hard time with acceptance and your mind is still just having a block, no, 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 or willfulness, do a pros and cons on it. See where you think acceptance might get you in the long run. Mm-hmm. Want to pause for questions though, final statements, anything, stuff that you would want to add or say, questions from the audience. You guys can put things in the chat, questions, comments in the chat. We'll read them out loud. Mm-hmm. Give you guys a minute to do that. I need to radically accept that the chat's not functioning so well right now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Radically accepting. Radically accepting that we can't see you or possibly not be able to talk to you right now. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything coming through the chat. I don't know what's going on. You all see that. Mm-hmm. I switch it to everyone, not host and panelists. I think still not working. Okay. So Jean said you can see that. So that's to say to everyone. So if you guys notice, it says to and like a little carrot arrow, make sure it says to everyone. It shouldn't say host and panelists. That's what I was doing and you guys couldn't see it. So make sure it says to everyone. So if you guys want to comment or have questions for us, write it in the chat now and make sure it says to everyone. Mm -hmm. 
Unless everyone's radical acceptance whizzes now. <laughs> we did it. Everyone's so accepting. That DBT fairy dust, sprinkle, sprinkle. It works. <laughs> and some other questions might come up later as well. And we recognize that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to digest in a skill. So if you need to just kind of sit with it for a little bit, it's totally fine. I can also, as we end, Steph, if you have more comments, certainly add them, so it's helpful. Um, I would like to read everybody a radical acceptance um, mindfulness exercise. So I have to just kind of duck into my drawer right here. I wasn't sure we'd had time to do it, so I didn't get it prepared, but it's right here. So Steph, if you wanna add any details, very helpful. I see some things coming through now, mm -hmm. thanks guys. Mm -hmm. We'll end with a radical acceptance mindfulness and kind of how you put it into practice in your day. But Steph, throw in any final details you got. Elena, did you say Steph? I did. I said oh. yeah. If you can, if you want to add any final yeah. details, I'm gonna find my radical acceptance mindfulness right here. No problem. Yeah, I just wanted to again highlight that being like feeling stuck and feeling that misery might be something that people find comfort in as well so getting out of the misery might be extremely challenging mm -hmm. so also make sure, like i want everyone to feel like validated as well where there are certain things that might be harder to radically accept or like not at a place or a time to radically accept something such as like a big disclaimer, like trauma. Um, trauma, we're talking about not in the past, but currently how it's impacting you. Not saying that any type of radical acceptance is like approval or is like um, saying that like, and not like with that certain situation, but like having love or compassion or like fighting against like change in general. That's not what radical acceptance is. It's not approval. It's not fighting change. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to highlight that as well. That's really important. And mm -hmm. I will second that. I know for myself when I experienced loss, there's mm -hmm. almost a way where it feels validating to stay miserable because you feel connected to that person or event or being like somehow like staying miserable somehow, like you, there's always this feeling of like guilt that if you let go of staying miserable and suffering that you're letting go of it or that person or anything. So, um, but yeah, that's definitely a really important point and we still need to work towards acceptance so mm -hmm. i'm going to read this um we're going to end this way this is really quick it is what it is mindfulness okay so everyone close your eyes and move your attention to your chest feel your breath moving into your lungs and feel it moving out and remind yourself this is what it is it may not be what i would choose but this is what it is I can tolerate what is. To deny what is would be a waste of my energy. I can and will accept that this situation is exactly as it needs to be, even if I do not understand the purpose or meaning of it. A nice way to tie radical acceptance into your day and some, some nice reminders. So we are at 5.30. And we just want to thank you both. Thank you all, both of us. Thank you so much to say, <laughs> for attending today. Hopefully this is just one step closer to being more skillful in your life and have a really positive effect. I know it's had an effect on me. So thank you guys for attending. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. I usually do the heart um, like emojis and stuff with uh, expressions, but I don't have access to that right now. So thank you yes. everyone for attending. We really Bye appreciate guys. it. Bye guys. Thank you.